discovering and bringing to light the achievements of the German Protestant missionaries for the spread of the gospel in Tamil Nadu is an important activity that cannot be neglected in Tamil history. During the 17th and 18th centuries, there prevailed in Europe a religious confrontation between the Roman Catholics and Lutheran Protestants. The Danish king Frederick IV, being a Lutheran Protestant, had the ambition of spreading the Protestant faith in foreign countries, especially in his Danish colonies. The Danish East India Trading Company was developing its trade activities in Trankuba. The Danish people at that time did not come forward to be missionaries to spread their religion. Hence, the king had to search for missionaries in other parts of the Europe. Germany came to the rescue and Halle in Germany supplied the missionaries. The German missionaries were dedicated for such a life in the far land in Trankuba, India. I started my search about Protestant missionaries and their contributions to Tamil language when I happened to read the book with titled German Tamilology, written by Dr. Mohanavelu, who spent substantial years in Germany doing research and devoted serious attention in Christian missionary activities that are related to Tamil and Tamil Nadu. The facts that he has presented in his books opened many areas that requires further research. I started collecting information available in the internet public domains and continued my research. Day by day, my interest to visit the archives and see the Tamil manuscripts was growing and my journey to Copenhagen started. It all started when a Danish admiral, Overgate, was sent by the King of Denmark as his ambassador to India. Admiral Gate spent his early days in the Nayaka court at Tanju and made negotiations to start up trade activities in this region. At first, the Nayaka King Ragunatha, in his letter, extended his friendship to the King of Denmark and the letter was written on a gold leaf resembling a palm leaf in Tamil. This gold leaf letter is now preserved in the Royal Archives of Copenhagen in Denmark. Later, Admiral Gate went to Tanjur and negotiated further a treaty with the Ragunada Nayak king. The treaty with the Nayaka king's signature was signed in 1620. It is preserved in the Royal Archives of Copenhagen. As per the treaty, the Danish crown acquired Trankuba on an annual rent for 3,111 rupees on the year 1620. This is Asker Svane Knudsen and I am curator at the Danish National Archives. And we are standing in one of our new repositories that was inaugurated in 2009. Mm -hmm. In this building we have uh, um, about 375 so kilometers of files and among them are uh, files from uh, the Danish presence in India and Southeast Asia. This is about 400 years back, right? Yes. Nearly 300 to 400. We started in 1670, mm -hmm. but after around uh, 30 years uh, the company went bankrupt mm -hmm. and we actually didn't uh, have connection to Trunk Bar for 30 years. And then in 1670, we revived the company and sent a ship back to Trunkabar and 
there was a single Danish man who kept the fortress that's still, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it was possible to revive this company. Mm -hmm. It flourished until 1720, where mm -hmm. the trade declined, mm -hmm. and it went bankrupt in 1729. Mm -hmm. And a new company was uh, erected with focus on Asia, not just India, but Asia. It was called the Danish Asian Company. And it continued until 1845, where we sold both Tonkaba and uh, Serampore in Kolkata to the English. Okay. So, how many, roughly about how many artifacts from Trankuba, for example, from Tr Trankuba, South India, that you, are, you have here? I, I can't say exactly how many mm -hmm. bundles. I have counted around yes. a thousand bundles. Okay. But I know there are more bundles with uh, files that are connected to Trankuba. And they are in different languages, Tamil, Telugu, yes. in Danish language? Yes. In Most German of it language. is in Danish, but also oh, okay. documents uh, that mm -hmm. has been sent mm -hmm. from different parts of mm -hmm. uh, India and, and South East Asia mm -hmm. to the Danish um, presence in Tankaba in okay. Singapore. Okay. Mm -hmm. so, among the okay. most in, uh, okay. interesting things are the gold foils mm -hmm. that we have been talking about. Mm -hmm. We have then this box. And this box contains some of the documents that were uh, used when we acquired uh, Tankaba in 1620. And we have the gold foils here in these uh, boxes. And you can see they are a little bit different. This is the, the, the oldest and the best gold foil. It's high quality gold. Mm -hmm. This is bending. These are in lower quality and they bend a little. Okay. And are there any inscription on that? Yes, there are inscriptions on it, okay. and oh, Raman yeah, has been it. able to, to ah. read them. Okay. And is it in Telugu or is it in Tamil language? Okay. Yeah. So I see here three um, gold foils. So which yeah. one? All of them are in Tamil language? Yeah, they're all yes. in Tamil. Yes. They're all in Tamil language. Okay. So it it's very be... difficult to read these two mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. the, uh, the inscription is not very good. Mm -hmm. yeah. This one mm -hmm. is... Uh, the one from Raghunatha and this you can... Naika, you mean? Yeah. Raghunatha Naika, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Okay. And his signature is from here across in Telugu. Okay. He assigned it Raghunatha. Yeah. And the interesting thing is that <clears throat> he had signed the gold leaf first mm -hmm. before the text Has been uh, was inscribed. written. Mm -hmm. okay. So he had to write his name in Telugu and yeah. then people wrote it in Tamil. This is where he gives a Trankaba to the Danes. Yeah. I see. So he, it's the most significant one then, in this case. Yeah, it's it's absolutely, absolutely, yeah. Yeah. That is okay. the beginning of all of it. That's for the 3,111 um, Indian rupees, yeah, annual, yeah, annual, yeah. annual, yeah. annual but, fees. But this one is from uh, uh, an official in Tanjore. He mm -hmm. is uh, writing to the king that he wants his, uh, that he had been living mm -hmm. there for 300 years. Now he, somebody had taken his property away and he wants it back. Okay. Mm -hmm. So these are the three gold foils that you yeah. have you keep yeah. here. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Is there any reason why it is not kept in the museum and kept here? It's or because it's it's text and it's usually uh -huh. in the in an archive. It's but archive. it's very unusual to mm -hmm. have uh, mm -hmm. gold foils mm -hmm. in an archive. Mm -hmm. Extremely uh, unusual. Absolutely, you know. So usually it's just, you know in, in in the other parts, yeah. so it is yeah. kept in the museums. And mm -hmm. it could have been mm -hmm. kept in the museum, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. it's part of a. Um, the treaty that was made with Raghunatha mm -hmm. uh, about acquiring uh, uh, Trankaba. So, is there any effort has been taken to transcribe this text, and then is there any I books? Have yeah. I have this but uh, perhaps uh, probably I can Daman read. Yeah, can it is Tamil. It is Tamil. It's Tamil language. Yeah, yeah I can see. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, that's some uh, amount. Mm -hmm. It's it's three hundred and no hundred and thirty. Okay. To one, four, two, three, some numbers on it. I think it's a, it's an accounting paper.
the Danish King Frederick IV, who ruled the Danish Kingdom from 1699 to 1730, desired to spread the Protestant religion in foreign countries, especially among the Tamils of Trankuba. He sent missionaries to promote the Protestant Christianity. These missionaries conducted missionary services and write letters, diaries and notes in palm leaves to promote the missionary activities. The Danish missionary group mainly included Germans, therefore it can be called German missionary. 48 missionaries came to India to propagate Protestant religion under the Danish patronage. The most remarkable among them were Bartholomus Siegenbalg, Heinrich Pletcho, Benjamin Schulz, John Philip Fabricus, Walter N. Schwartz. In Tamil Nadu, the first German Protestant missionary Bartholomus Siegenbalg and Heinrich Pletcho arrived at the Danish settlement of Trankuba in July 1706. A wrong notion was prevalent in Europe that Malabarians are barbarians during the 17th and 18th centuries. Malabarians here refer to Tamilians. Early European sailors and traders formed such a wrong notion out of total ignorance of the Tamil people, their language and culture. No wonder Siegenbalg also arrived in Trankuba with such a bias. But soon he realized this is a wrong opinion and he changed his views. Siegenbalg understood that Tamilians are not barbarians, instead intelligent and rich in culture. He sent letters and requested his godfather August Hermann Franke in Halle to publish them to enable European people to get the right picture of Tamil people. Unfortunately, Father Franke did not publish them and they were buried in a cloud of dust. However, after 215 years, they were taken out by William German and published them as genealogy of Malabar gods. The early German missionaries had to learn Tamil under very difficult conditions. They felt that this language should be taught in German universities so that later German missionaries could become more successful in their missionary duties at Trankuba. As a result, the German were insisted upon learning Tamil language so deeply at university level as early as 1715 itself. The most significant letters and handwritten palm leaf manuscripts are kept in the Royal Library of Copenhagen in Denmark and in the Franken Foundation archives in Halle, Germany. In terms of German and European Tamil study, this archive is of immense importance. It poses original source materials for further research and studies. Siegenbalg had great challenge in his mission to spread the gospel among the local Tamilians. He realized he must learn the local language, which is Tamil, in order to get closer to the Tamil people. He undertook all measures to learn Tamil language at the earliest. First he learned Portuguese. This is because most of the Tamil people there spoke a corrupt form of Portuguese language. With this basic Portuguese knowledge, he could converse with the native Tamil teachers in Portuguese. He then requested a Tamil schoolmaster to bring the school children in his house and teach them Tamil, while he keep on watching them. Soon Siegenbalg got an interpreter named Alepa who spoke Tamil, Portuguese, Dutch, 
Danish and also German. Alepa has served the missionaries nearly two years until he was put into prison by one of the Danish commander. of his stay, Siegenberg was able to send the court preacher in Copenhagen his collection of Tamil works, consisting of 161 books, out of which 14 books are written by him in Tamil. From the time he saw palm leaves, Siegenberg nursed a desire to acquire as many palm leaves as he could. With his Tamil palm leaf collections, he came to read historical, theological, philosophical and even medical writings of the Tamil people contained in the palm leaves and soon he collected 40,000 Tamil words to compile a dictionary. He thought this dictionary could help the later missionaries to learn proper Tamil language. Grammar is the basic for a language. Soon after his arrival in Trankuba, Siegenbal compiled a Tamil grammar book called Grammatica Damulika, which was printed in Halle, Germany in 1716. He undertook the needs for knowing the difficult words and usages found in the verses of Tamil religious books. Through his reading, he collected 20,000 such words and compiled a prose lexicon. In 1708, Ziegenbal completed another magnificent book called Bibliotheca Malabarica. His important works are the genealogy of Malabar gods, written in 1707, as it throws lights on several aspects such as Hindu festivals, temple architecture, buildings and traditional music. Another book with the title Conferences deals with the conferences held between the Danish missionaries and the local Tamil scholars. During his stay in Trankuba, he engaged himself in active translation of New Testament into Tamil and a comparative analysis of Christianity and Hinduism. The most important contribution of Siegenbalg was the establishment of printing press at Trankuba in 1712.
the Tamil palm leaf manuscript collection kept in the Royal Library of Copenhagen includes variety of information. There are palm leaf books collected by the German missionaries. Among them are folk tales such as Vikramadithan Kadai, Nalu Mandiri Kadai, Terwunda Sodan Kadai, Veeramaran Kadai, Vedala Kadai, Sivavakir Padalhal, and medicinal books such as Vaithya Thirattu Sindhamani. A collection of handwritten manuscripts called Christian Composition in Tamil is the masterpiece kept in this library. They are all catalogued and very well preserved in the Royal Library of Copenhagen. Tamil Heritage Foundation has taken steps to digitize few selected manuscripts from this collection with the notion to spread the hard work, dedication and commitments shown by the German missionaries in the mission to spread the Gospels, the efforts they undertake to learn Tamil language and spread the pride of Tamil language in Europe among the educated and elite circle. The hard work invested by those missionaries in learning Tamil and writing in Tamil about 300 years back should not be neglected. Written palm leaf manuscripts by the German missionaries contain valuable information related to the 300 years old history of Tamils in Trankuba. The missionaries' contribution in writing them, collecting them, and preserving them enable the future researchers to understand 
how the European missionaries learned Tamil about 300 years back. Tamil Heritage Foundation is proud and with full heart convey our sincere gratitude to these legends. Thank you.